Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I hope you had a nice summer. I did and uh, I've not been releasing any content or filming anything. Um, uh, actually, I've been renovating my hobby space here, as you can see in the background. Uh, and uh, it's uh, a big improvement and it will make things easier and more structured for me. And I have uh, more gaming space and yeah, everything's just better. Uh, but I did film something this week. Uh, I did paint uh, the ancient shrine from Infinite Dimension Games. It's a really nice, cool uh, model and I will show you how I painted it. And uh, there's a lot more coming uh, over the months, but uh, enjoy uh, this tutorial for now and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye! I uh, had already primed the model uh, with some uh, sprays here. I used uh, Mechanica Standard Grey from Games Workshop for the rock parts and uh, Leather Brown from Army Painter for the tree parts. And then I dusted over some sandry dust from Games Workshop just uh, on the wooden parts to highlight to uh, give uh, this model a base to start from. And uh, uh, when uh, doing the airbrushing I uh, usually start by shading. Uh, my airbrush was actually, uh, I don't know, it was acting up this time and uh, I had to clean it a little bit but uh, it, it worked better as I uh, progressed so uh, in the start here is, is, it's, uh, it's not working perfectly but I used some really dark grey uh, airbrush paint here and I shaded the rock parts just to uh, get a starting point for, for the rest of the painting in the highlights uh, and just go over the, the recesses there and uh, then I uh, picked out my gray primer it's almost white and I used that to highlight all the rock parts just uh, wherever you would highlight anything do this the same way with the airbrush and as you um, do this more often you just get more accurate with it and uh, it's almost like a normal brush uh, when you get used to it it's it's really very quick and uh, perfect for terrain painting, I think. And uh, the only hassle with airbrush is uh, is the cleaning part. It's a bit fiddly, but I use an ultrasonic cleaner that makes it a lot easier. I shaded the wood parts with burnt umber from Vallejo uh, Air Range, and uh, just the same here. Hit the low parts and the recesses, and uh, try to just uh, get a natural uh, look to it. Uh, just use reference photos if you like or whatever you want if you if you want a fantasy look just google some in images of what you're after and and go after that i i didn't do it this time because i've done this so many times i just uh, kind of free base it <laughs> and uh, i wanted somewhere in the middle of fantasy and realism for this one so i wanted it a bit muted not uh, not garish and and if you think the rock and the wood parts to to be very very separated color wise because uh, i wanted this to have more of a natural look but uh, still some fantasy uh, aspect to it so i uh, i didn't go uh, too far with the with the color choices here and uh, i used actually uh, some of the same highlight colors for everything later on but um, um, just a very light tan color for the the highlights on the wood here and just really try to hit hit the high points and and be as accurate as you can but if you make a mistake just go over it with the, with the previous colors it's it's very forgiving with the airbrushing uh, if you have some patience and uh, just have your cleaning products around airbrush thinner uh, airbrush cleaner and uh, water uh, so you can uh, can clean between colors I uh, I'm keeping this tree separated as you can see because it's uh, it's a hassle to store it otherwise but I try to put the pieces on uh, when I'm uh, doing the seams here so so the color will be more uh, in line with with the bottom part and the top part so it doesn't look too separate when put together uh, some mossy green color I think it's nice for, for both the wood and the, the stone, it brings it together and it looks very natural and I mean uh, on this uh, this is a very 
old uh, building with a tree growing over it and I imagine it's being totally overgrown with moss and, and grass and stuff like that so I'm just uh, trying to get a kind of an old moldy mossy look here with a, with a green uh, I think it's called interior green from Vallejo Air it's a, it's a very nice muted green and I mixed in some uh, some blue here and uh, the small little fountain or pond there I just uh, hit it with some blue that I mixed with the green and then just highlighted it with really light uh, wolf grey I think just to give it a nice uh, bluish greenish uh, look there I re uh, did some of the highlights on the stone parts that uh, kind of uh, became too dark when I hit them with the green and uh, just to make them pop a little more and uh, yeah just try to make them stand out a little bit more from the from the wood here and uh, that was uh, my uh, airbrushing session done it's it's about 30 minutes of work maybe uh, total it's uh, it's really quick uh, this tree took one hour to paint a uh, total I checked when I imported the files uh, and it's it's one hour with painting and uh, all the uh, natural elements with the moss and stuff like that you'll see later but it's it's a really quick paint job and the airbrush is, is the reason that it, it it's th this fast I mean airbrushing and dry brushing combined is uh, it's just marvelous for train painting it's uh, yeah it's um, it's a great way to do train and the brushwork it creates another look but it's uh, it's a lot harder and this is what it looks like after the airbrushing session and uh, time to move on to uh, painting with a paintbrush actually it kind of looks good already here but uh, you know that's not good enough for me so moving on here with uh, some very light beige paint it's a uh, Windsor Newton uh, acrylic range I think it's, uh, it's a, some light umber paint and I dry brush everything with this uh, I do this on the train piece on all my train pieces it's it's a good it's a good light dry brush color uh, you've seen me use it before if you checked any other videos from me but uh, it kind of brings everything together like I said before and uh, uh, I hit it with some white afterwards just to make some elements pop but this is a this is a good muted highlight color and uh, just be very careful when uh, applying the paint really just brush off most of it because if you have too much paint on the brush you'll ruin everything and uh, just be be a bit thorough about that especially with white paint just really really rub most of it off on the surface below and then gently hit the parts where you want the white mostly on the rock parts for me this time because I wanted to to have those stand out a little bit more from the wood and uh, I think it looks kind of cool so I just hit those with the white and uh, that was the end of the dry brushing it's um, that was about like five minutes of work so uh, there's no rush uh, weathering powders is a good way to like bring everything uh, down a little bit and make it more realistic and I used those in, in the shaded areas and where dust would collect uh, all over the both the rock parts and the wood parts it's it's um, it's a wonderful little product and I use mostly this mix of rust and uh, dark uh, earth pigment that I use for <laughs> a lot of stuff I have a lot more jars but this one is my go-to mix and uh, I have some really bright green powder too that I create kind of a additional bright mossy uh, texture here I got too much and I bring it down with the brown again but uh, this bright green creates kind of, kind of a nice mossy uh, extra natural feel to the to the wood parts I, I only use this on the wood parts not on the rock because uh, I just lied there because I did use it on the 
<laughs> on the big rocks to create the moss uh, base for the moss. But uh, that's the weathering. I sprayed it with uh, some uh, satin varnish and then I used the quick shade. Uh, I just brush it all over to create a nice, uh, both a, a protecting varnish layer and uh, a nice shading for everything. And uh, I really like this uh, quick shade from Aria Painter. It's it's very easy to use. It it has a long drying time. You have to wait in 24 hours before you can move on. But it it really speed it speeds things up and uh, it looks very nice uh, when finished. Uh, especially on train pieces. It's a bit expensive, but I diluted with white spirits about 70% uh, quick shade and 30% white spirits that so last longer. I had some Leo uh, water effects lying around in a bottle, so I used the last drops of it here to create a nice surface for the pond here uh, and uh, left that to dry. So um, the last step is. is uh, the natural elements, uh, uh, I mean static grass and flock and uh, I have stuff that I picked out in the forest that I add to this and I uh, bought some leaves uh, that are actually birch seeds. They're all in my backyard now, <laughs> wish I picked those instead of buying it. And of course I'm putting my head in front of the camera all the time. Uh, so. I have to excuse that but um, just flock here uh, wherever I thought the grass or moss would grow and I just uh, do it a little bit at a time uh, this process is kind of fun and it's uh, it's an evolving process so you have to uh, you, you can do a lot of it at once but I prefer to do it like this uh, on, on a train piece on a big if I'm doing like a battlefield I will do a lot bigger areas at the time and then spray it with glue but uh, this time I, I did it in small patches and uh, I had some hanging moss that I found in the forest around where I live and I used some watered down PVA glue to attach it uh, from the tree to, to like yeah represent uh, I don't know moss or lichen or stuff growing out of branches and hanging down it looks kind of cool and uh, kind of dark foresty look to it and uh, yeah just uh, let it dry after a while and it, it will probably last for a little bit I figured that the tree tree trunk would be covered in moss and stuff like that so I applied actually some some flock on top of that too and uh, some static grass tufts that I bought from Games Workshop I just applied those to places where I thought it looked good to have some bigger weeds and stuff like that sticking out of the ground and uh, I had some flowers I bought I think this is army painter I'm not sure but uh, uh, yeah I tend to stock up on these when I can and I, it's it's really nice looking uh, the flower tufts and, and yeah small plants and uh, yeah all kinds of greenery that you just uh, yeah put wherever you like and uh, this is uh, perhaps uh, a little bit too much for if you're doing a lot of train pieces <laughs> it's gonna be quite expensive to have this much on it but I think it looks nice and this is kind of a centerpiece thing uh, and uh, yeah of course some leaves here some dead leaves uh, the birch seeds that I bought and uh, just uh, trying to get those looking natural uh, the hard part with doing greenery and stuff like this is actually to get a natural look. I'm, I'm not sure I'm an expert on it, but I'm getting better and uh, just do it until you're happy. Uh, too little looks actually worse than too much sometimes, so uh, just find a level where you're happy. I sprayed it uh, with uh, some isopropanol alcohol and uh, watered down PVA to seal it and then uh, and it's done. <laughs>